That's the one. So you know, I'm the public information officer for the current county fire department. Currently, one of the public information officers assigned to the Cedar Fire. The Cedar Fire is an interagency fire. We have the current county fire department and the U.S. Forest Service. This morning at 6 a.m., an incident management team took over. And this is the same incident management team that was here in the Erskine Fire, so they're very familiar with the community. Uh, they're hitting the ground running, and we're hoping to make good progress in the coming days. The fire started Tuesday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Our crews from Glenville, uh, we had Forest Service on scene very quickly, as well as coming up the back way from Kernville. Uh, since that time, the fire has now grown to 1,619 acres. That was obtained with infrared uh, helicopters that flew over the fire last night. The fire is still 5% contained. We have containment line near Cedar Creek Campground. That appears to be near the uh, origin of the fire. Uh, we have 600 firefighters on scene. They're utilizing Camp 9, which is a little bit east of Kernville as their base camp now. They are traveling to and from the fire up 155. We've uh, made it very clear to the firefighters to use caution down that steep grade because it is steep and uh, we don't want any of them uh, burning up their brakes in that regard. Uh, one of the issues they're facing right now is the tree mortality. As you all know, that's an issue not only in Alta Sierra, but throughout California and here in Kern County especially. Uh, we've seen the fire behavior really increase when it gets into those areas of dead trees. And so that's something that we're concerned about, not only in fighting the fire, but also our firefighters are in there. There's risk of those trees falling and hurting firefighters. So uh, that's one of the issues. Today is going to be hot and dry, just as it has been the last three days. They're expecting winds up to 20 miles an hour. Uh, but we're not, we're not seeing that fire come east towards Alta Sierra. Right now it's moving north, easterly direction. It's gotten into a little bit of Tulare County. And uh, we've made those recommended evacuations for the three communities, Alta Sierra, Shirley Meadows, and Slick Rock. We have two levels of evacuations here in Kern County. One is precautionary. The other is recommended. Uh, recommended is the last evacuation notice we give. Uh, the precautionary evacuations were made Tuesday night. And KCSO is very uh, helpful in going door to door and talking with those people. There, there's not a whole lot of people that have been affected. All those 300 homes, most of those people um, either are vacation homes or, or they're not there. I think it's about half. Uh, the next day we opted to go with the higher level of evacuations and that was because we anticipated <coughs> greater fire behavior in the afternoon and that is exactly what happened. The fire nearly tripled in size uh, later yesterday afternoon. Any questions? Do you have any idea? Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you have any idea what started that fire? Uh, the U.S. Forest Service is, is investigating that, and I don't know where they're at in their investigation, so I would be inclined not to share information, but I, I don't have any details. Okay. Well, what, um, I'm Penny Lampkins, president of the HOA up there. Um, what direction are they, per, you know, the winds that are coming in because it's low pressure change? What, what, what area, which, which direction do we think? Well, oftentimes the winds in this area do blow east. Uh, so that's always a threat. We'll know uh, this afternoon kind of what we're facing, but uh, the winds weren't, weren't a significant part of what we're looking at as compared to uh, you know, other times of the year we see here, 40 mile an hour winds. Uh, I think it was gusts up to 20 or so miles an hour. So apparently no structures have been lost. No structures have been lost, no reported injuries. Yes, sir. Where is uh, 155 closed at? Let's see. We have park closures at Highway 155. Yeah, it's um, right at the uh, wide turn. Okay, the wide turn. There's stations right there. So there's a couple. One at the Sequoia National Forest boundary on the southern end and at Pasco Road on the northern end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Forest Highway 190, or Forest Highway 90, mm -hmm. is closed from Highway 155 <coughs> to the Portuguese Pass. Mm -hmm. Old State Road has been closed in Wofford Heights at its junction with Mountain Shadow Road. I met with one of your battalion chiefs this morning and actually pointed out a hydrant that we have halfway up the hill. So 
hopefully they can, I mean, we have a 300,000 gallon tank there that they can start utilizing takes half the trip out of the... That would help because I know that uh, at the top, the water was pretty scarce. Yeah, they're running on spring boxes and they don't have the water that we have. So it's the homestead track. I pointed out to your battalion chief, they're going to flag the hydrant and hopefully okay. take half the trip out of the, the damage. Yes, ma'am. Kind of different question, you might say. Um, I am a victim that lost my home in Southlake. Um, uh, purchased the property up in Buckfish. Um, and all up in my area, there's empty lots that are weeds are like this high. Uh, pine trees, I mean, right in the middle of, of a community. I mean, it, it's We're gonna talk a neighborhood. And I, you know, they post these weeds to be, you're going to get citations after June 15th. Um, so I called the fire department and asked the stipulations on this because I was told by the fire department that they actually get four notices before the tax assessor takes the property away. I mean, that's a, it's just a fire waiting to happen. Someone flipping their cigarette out and there's another right. whole neighborhood that's there. I think that's out. something you guys are going to talk about together. Yeah, and I know Chief that. Regan is here who's very familiar with that process. Because I, my property, I work 11 hours a day, and my property, I call it manicured dirt. I dig my boots up. I don't weed eat them. Um, there's just no excuse why after the first warning they don't get rid of these. I mean, Yes, sir. Back to the Cedar Fire, where, can you tell us where it is in relations to Alta Sierra? I mean, is it out uh, past Tiger Flat? It's, it's, it's are you Tiger familiar with uh, Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. Cedar Creek Campground on your way to Linville? Well, I'm very familiar with that. That's yes. kind of where the fire originated. Well, I, I understand that. I'm talking about where is it now? It's where is the head? North, a little bit east. Bull Run Basin. Can, Bull Run is okay, worse. Tiger Flat, Bull Run Basin. So what I'm getting at there is that is quite a ways away. It's moving away basically from Alta Sierra. Correct. Right. Okay. Oh, I had one other question. The, the fire started on both sides of the highway. I think it's probably started in one place, yeah. but when we arrived on scene, the fire was It was on both sides. I assume that since the main conversation is about what's on the north side. The stuff that was on the south side of the road, I assume that's been squashed out? Yeah, for the most part that's a containment line or it's been cold. Okay, because that is what directly hits to Shirley Meadows and yeah. Most of what I've seen is on the north side. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. That's not what I'm speaking. That must be the 5%. That's a good 5%. That's a good 5%. Yeah. The, the prisons in California are so overpopulated and all of our tax dollars support these inmates. 